Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I have big news. We're done with harvest. I didn't get it on camera because, to be honest, the last few days of harvest were really frustrating dealing with the mud and the down corn, and I just didn't really feel like carrying a camera around with it. So we finished corn. I guess we're not completely done. We still have our wheat beans left to harvest. We're not gonna fight for them. If we get a chance to harvest them, we're gonna harvest them. If not, I guess we'll just see what happens on that. We've only got, I don't even remember, 25, 30, 32 acres, something like that of wheat beans. I'm gonna guess they're probably gonna yield somewhere around that 20 to 25 bushel per acre. So if we get a chance to harvest them, it'll be worth it, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Anyways, we have moved on to some tillage. We got the new 8235R tractor hooked up to the strip till bar. Uh, I'm just letting it warm up a little bit. It's chilly this morning. It's uh, low 30s. Sorry, my camera died. I left my camera in my truck overnight and it was really cold and I think the battery's cold. And it keeps telling me low battery even though I got 58%. But anyways, we got a little issue with the strip till bar here. This row was not making a very good strip and the knife I was using was pretty wore out. The knives we run, they are a mole knife. Let's see if I can show you here. So this is what you call a mole knife, but somebody has added these wings on. When we bought it, they were like that. I've never seen a knife like that. We're thinking they are custom and we liked the job they were doing. So we had more of them made, but I had one that was completely wore out. Hold on, I'll show you. So you can see how thin that is. That knife is just completely shot. The spare I have wasn't much better. So what I did was I put a plain mole knife on without the wing. I guess I could show you that over there. So here it is right here. It's just a regular old mole, regular old mole knife. It doesn't have the wing on it, but it's got some thickness to it. So I think it's uh, that's the reason why we're not making a very good strip. That thickness was completely gone on that old knife and it just wasn't throwing very much dirt but i don't have another spare a good spare with that wing on it so what i've got over here now is i've got this knife it's a different style knife but it does have a little bit of a wing i might try this later i'm just going to take a whole bunch of stuff with me and see if we can get that one making a nice strip for us so i'm going to need to take three quarter wrench and a ratchet um, is this the three quarter? Nope, this one. Normally we have some basic tools in the tractors, but I haven't had a chance to fill the toolbox on the new tractor yet. So I think this is all I need to change knives if I need to. Let's get going, let's do something. So my diesel fuel nozzle didn't click off. We can't have anything nice. All right, let's get going here. So, I have had a chance to run the new tractor a little bit, and so far I really like it. It's definitely a little bit underpowered compared to the 8400, and I had some people tell me that, but like I said, getting this tractor tuned is always an option. We bought it because it was really nice. We knew it was gonna be a little bit smaller than what we wanted, but it was low hour, really nice tractor. It was, we just couldn't pass it up. So yeah, we're gonna run it. Like I said, we're gonna run it a little bit and just kind of see how it does, try it out on a few things, see if we really need that extra power or not. But I'm leaning towards, yeah, we're probably gonna need it. Okay, so we're out here in the field. I just wanna show you guys what we got going on here. This is one of my farms that I got in the Equip program. And uh, what that is, it's a cost share program through the NRCS. It stands for like Environmental Quality Incentive Program. Does that sound right? I just made that up. I have no idea what it stands for. But this is a field that I've got cover crops on. Uh, we got oats and radishes out here. These are the radishes. Let's see if I can pull one out for you. They're not super big yet. But these suckers, if you let them grow, they will get massive. They'll grow down like a foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet deep. I really don't know how big they'll get before they die. But we also have oats. And this is the best year I've had for oats and radishes. They grew so well. They really got up nice before we got a freeze. And they're, they're still growing. They've been frosted 
quite a few times and I'm really surprised they haven't died yet. They are, they are a lot hardier than I thought they would be. That program also pays for you to do no-till and strip-till. And there's some other practices that you can do if you want, but we're strip-tilling in here in the cover crops. And I really like the system so far. We've had a lot of good luck. Well, we've had mixed luck with strip-till, but I think we've finally got it figured out and it really seems to be working for us. So we're gonna get going here. I'm gonna let the frost burn off because it's kind of hard to see what's going on. And once I get rolling a little bit, we'll hop out, show you the strips, and I'll kind of talk about that more. All right, so we need mechanical front wheel drive engaged, auto steer on. What gear am I in? 10th. All right, engage the auto steer. Let's take off. Alright, so I made a few rounds. I still don't like the job that that row is doing, so I'm going to try this knife. It's not exactly right, but I think it might do a little bit better job. I'll show you what I got going on here. So when you're doing strip till, you want it to be nice, clean, black strip, pumped up just a little bit. That way the, the dark soil will catch the sunlight in the spring and warm up. And you don't want any residue on top because the corn doesn't like to push through residue. So you want a nice, clean strip, no residue. So what I got going on here, I don't know if you can see it, but these strips look good. These strips look good. This guy right here, it's just not a very nice strip. There's a lot of trash on top yet, and it's not humped up very much. I believe it's because we're not running that wing, but like I said, the uh, the knife I had with the wing was pretty much shot, so I tried a regular one. We're gonna put this other one on that's got a little bit of a wing on it. Try that one. If that doesn't work, I've got one with an actual wing that's a little bit less wore out than the one I had. We'll try that one. And if that doesn't work, we're just gonna go for it because we don't have a whole lot of window here to be getting this strip till done. Sorry about the dirty window, but that is the row we're looking at right there. It's doing a little bit better job. I still don't like it. I'm gonna run it for a while and see what happens here. It seems like when we're in the lighter ground, this, this farm's a little variable. It's got some low heavy ground and then some higher ground that's a little sandier. But when we're in the light ground, it's doing a really good job. But when you get into the heavy ground, I think it just needs that wing to lift the, lift the soil up and make a nice berm. So we're not getting that. I might switch to that other knife. I guess we'll see. I'm gonna run a little bit, decide later. Made a couple rounds, still don't like the job that row unit's doing. We're gonna try this knife. It's uh, not quite as worn out as the one I was running yesterday. We'll see what happens here. Well, it's not great, but I guess it is a little better. I guess we'll run that for a while. So we've got a welding shop in town here. Uh, they actually measured out those wings and kind of cut out some new ones. They've got one of those automated plasma cutter dealios and he can make us up some new ones. I just think it's going to be a little while. I didn't realize that knife that I was running yesterday was that bad. Otherwise, I'd had to make some more, but we'll definitely get some more on order. That way we have some spares. I think that's the whole problem. I'm just not running a good knife on that one. I guess to test it, what I should do is take that knife off and a good one off and switch them and see if that solves the problem. Otherwise, I don't really know what it could be. But it's making a decent strip. I think it'll work. Somebody threw a can of glass cleaner in the field. We don't use this brand. 
was well into the field. I'm probably 150 feet from the road. That's strange. Might as well use it. It's almost full. Dad was hauling some line this morning and he got done. He ran over to the welder shop and picked up a knife. He actually had one made for us already. So I threw that on. I'm just doing the end rows here. That row is doing a lot better job with that new knife on it. So I'm gonna knock this field out real quick, get these end rows done, go grab some lunch, move to the next field. And I'm back from lunch. Actually, I've been back for a while. It is almost 3.30. So we're here in the other field. I'm actually really surprised how the ground conditions are. It's holding me up really well. And it's really, I mean, I couldn't ask for better conditions considering how much rain we've had lately. Um, this farm has been no-till for four years, and I think it's had cover crops for three now. And I really think it's made a big difference. This farm is a little bit heavier, tighter clay at one end, and then it's got kind of a sand ridge across the back. And in between, it's got a spot that's kind of low, and it's always it always seems kind of wet there. And I just went right through it, didn't even spin a tire. Just, I mean, like nothing. It really was surprising. Um, I think the oats and radishes growing really well have helped pull some moisture out of that area and really help shape it up so I can do this strip till. So talking about cover crops, there are a lot of benefits to cover crops. Um, it's kind of a learning curve. If you want to get into it, you really need to believe in the system and put some effort into it. You can't just be like, oh, I'll try cover crops, throw some out, and then it doesn't work. You really have to stick to it. You're not really gonna see the benefits first few years. I am just now starting to see the benefits after four or five years of doing this. I mean, the main goal is to increase your organic matter in the soil, and cover crops do that just because they are organic matter. They grow, they decay, they put organic matter back into the soil. Some other benefits include nutrient holding capacity. So these crops, while they're growing, these oats and radishes, they are pulling nutrients out of the soil, which normally that would be a bad thing. You would consider that a weed. You wanna save your nutrients for your crops. But what, what happens is it will take those nutrients up, hold on to them, and then when they die over the winter and start to decay, it puts those nutrients back into the soil. So right now we've spread some fertilizer on this field. Sometimes we put nitrogen down in the fall. We haven't we haven't had a chance to do that this year, but these crops will take up that phosphorus potassium that we spread, hold on to it over the winter, put it back in the soil next spring, and it just takes some of the risk off. The big one for me though is water infiltration. These cover crops, obviously they send out roots, and when the crop dies next spring, those roots leave channels with organic matter, and it improves water infiltration. We farm a lot of poorly drained soils. This farm is poorly drained. And I really think these cover crops, as well as the no-till system, building soil structure, and help with water infiltration. So, those are some of the benefits if you don't know what cover crops are. I really like them. I'm really, they really kind of, I'm really excited about them. I, I like trying new things, and I really think there's a lot of potential for cover crops for our farm. And look how beautiful that is, that strip till, that nice green in the middle. Ah, I love it. And the other thing is I'm sitting in this tractor strip tilling and I'm finding it really hard not to make a joke about stripping. Anyways, I digress. Look how cool this is. I'm not steering. It's steering itself. That is so cool. Sometimes you gotta help it out a little bit with the brakes, but it works pretty darn good. Let's hop out and look at it. So this is my guest row here. Looks like it got a little bit wide there, but it did really well. Technology is pretty amazing. So basically all you have to do is you hit record for your curve track and then you manually drive your first track and then it will create a line that adapts as you go out and it will follow that curve around. So we got this pine tree right on the edge here that 
we don't want to cut down because we think it's kind of like a landmark. It's just kind of cool on one single random pine tree. So we farm around it, it's not a big deal. Make a curve track. Now I got my 16 row planter, eight and eight, 16. We can plant right around here and everything will be good. That being said, I am done with this field. So I'm gonna head home. Uh, we're gonna call it a night. We got some more strip tilling to do. We'll probably hit it again tomorrow. We got some other tillage that we want to get done. The weather's actually cooperating for a change. We might actually get a little bit done here. So glad to be done with corn. Done harvesting corn anyway. It's uh, it's been our struggle all fall, and it's nice to have the weather kind of cooperate a little bit for a while. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you like it. Hope you learned something. If you're interested in any cover crops or any information on them, like I said, I am a dealer. My email's in the description. Send me an email. See you on the next one.